A critical process for every data team is how they deploy their changes to production. And if you go a little deeper, the real reason it's so important comes down to confidence. Not only the confidence in yourself and in your team that you're creating something that's valuable, but more importantly, the confidence that your stakeholders and the business have in the data that you're giving them. For everybody outside the team, it's a black box. And so they're relying on you to have processes to make sure things go smoothly. So in today's video, I wanna help you out with that and give you a few examples of ways you can improve your testing before things get to production. And my hope is that maybe you'll find one or maybe a few of them that you can introduce into your own process. So number one is using something called a linter. And so a linter, L-I-N-T is a piece of code. It's usually a little program that you can install that will check your queries and your files and make sure that you're following certain rules. It effectively helps maintain consistency. So this is going to allow you to make sure that you're not missing maybe a, an obvious comma at the end of a statement, that your file names are all named properly, that you're not having improper references around things. You don't have spelling mistakes or any of those little things that it's really easy to overlook. And one thing that's nice about this when it comes to kind of team dynamics is that it helps avoid this idea of being nitpicky with code reviews. Nobody really likes to be the one to point out little errors like that, or you don't want to be the one on the other end receiving that information. It just feels a little bit weird and like I said, like nitpicky. But when you have a linter in play, you can just run a command or have that automated so that it will call it out for you. And it's a lot easier to accept those recommendations from a computer program as opposed to somebody else in the team. So it's a great addition to add, whether you're using SQL, Python, or any other programming language, you can look up different linters that you can incorporate into your process and use it as you're developing as well as for your pre-production testing. Number two is environments and isolating where you're developing. A lot of times what I notice teams when they're first getting started or even if they're along a little bit, they only have a production environment and everything else I guess you could consider development, but there's no process. But if you're very particular about establishing different environments, for example, development environments, as well as a CI, or maybe you call it UAT, a pre-production testing environment, it can really help establish a process. And again, just give you different spots to catch errors before it gets to production and you're caught off guard. So here's the way I like to set it up. Number one is development. And for me, I recommend each developer gets their own development schema. You basically deploy everything into those individual schemas per developer. You're not breaking it out out into sub schemas, maybe in production, you have different schemas, everything gets deployed to one for your development environment. And this is really helpful because it not only gives you a safe space to build and develop, but it avoids conflicts with other developers. So you can feel more confident about the data you're working with. The second step would be that CI, or maybe you call it test or UAT, whatever you want to call it. And that's the place to do a full deployment before it gets to production. So this can happen during that merge process. When you're trying to move changes along, you can run tests, you can do some data validation if you want but it's a shared environment. It's not individual like development, but it's a place that you can double check again that everything's working properly before it gets to production, all happening behind the scenes. And then number three obviously is production. So once everything looks good, you merge it to production and production is where all of your BI tools, where stakeholders, where production stuff is gonna connect to. And you can have that locked down and maybe you have certain things broken out into different schemas in production, but not in the lower environments. That's up to you and your setup. At the end of the day, that is what production represents, but it's already gone through at least two other environments, which gives more opportunity to test things out and catch issues before it ever gets to your stakeholders. Next is automation. And this is kind of aligning with the environment concepts. It all works together. A lot of data engineering is creating a system and a system has a bunch of individual parts but when you put them together is really where the magic happens. And so in this case, what I'm talking about is automating process of moving from the dev environment to the CI environment. We can start with that. So you can have automation to automatically deploy and test your changes into that CI environment when you open something like a pull request or a merge request in your version control platform. So you can build out these different pipelines with different steps and different checks and commands you want to run. But it again gives you an automated way to deploy those changes to test as opposed to always relying on us as humans and individuals to check everything perfectly. The other part of the automation could be refreshing things on a schedule. So not only do you have that automation of testing new changes, but once everything is in production, you want to keep things updated and constantly refresh. It could be a simple cron job. You could have a separate tool, but it's this idea of automating and continuously testing things even once it's in production. A little bonus piece of advice here when it comes to this automation component and working with version control platforms, one thing I recommend is creating a request template. So it's maybe a PR or a merge request template. And this can be done in pretty much all of the platforms, whether it's GitHub, GitLab, or whatever you're using, but it allows you to auto-populate a description, a markdown file for your new request. And the value of this isn't because we wanna write out more documentation or list out things. Nobody really likes doing that, but the alternative is 
people like to cut corners. And if there's an easier way to do something, they're going to do it. But when you have a template, you can include certain sections. Maybe you want to have an overview, a quick description. You can include a checklist of specific items that you should always be double checking. And it's more of a forcing function to remind people of what they should be looking out for and what to check, as opposed to quickly trying to push through changes, not adding context, overlooking something because you're moving too fast. And then it comes back to bite you in the form of stakeholders calling out some production issues. If you have a good description and a template, you can go back and review what those changes were and have a better idea of what you need to fix and what was done. As opposed to if you have nothing, then you're blind of what the changes were. You got to look through the code and that's not fun for anybody. So connecting the automation with the templates is a great combination to help ensure that you're doing all the things you need to do before pushing changes to production. So to recap here, the three pieces of advice to improve your testing before it gets to production is number one, to look into adding a linter. Number two, separating your work into environments. And number three, using automation along with those templates to improve and double check your work before it ever gets to production. A lot of this falls under the workflow category of data engineering, which is just one of the four main sections in a free checklist I have for helping you create or validate your existing data architecture. It's completely free. It's something I put together based on things I've seen and what I typically recommend for teams to do. So if you're interested in grabbing that, there'll be a link in the description below. But either way, thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.